Hi, my name is Dong and I'm an animator. Smear drawings are an integral part of animation, no matter which country's industry you work in. I've been working in the Japanese animation industry for a couple of years now, so let's take a look at how we approach smears here. Smears are one of those things you don't really notice until someone points them out. At least the well-placed ones. Animators use them to help bridge large, fast movements and to give it additional punch. They are the animation equivalent of a film camera's motion blur. When used properly, they accentuate the movement in your animation and can also help you save time. Looking at old Tex Avery, Chuck Jones, and other early animation, these can look pretty gnarly, with these stretched shapes and repeated elements where characters start having multiple pairs of eyes, for example. But since these drawings are only exposed for one or two frames, we don't really notice them when watching animation. The main difference with how smears are approached in Japanese animation is that they tend to be much more subdued. I'm sure you have seen them with a lot of fast moving action scenes, and I have worked on a bunch of those throughout my career here. The lines are a lot more squigglier and less giant morphing shapes, but they still serve the same purpose. A lot of the time, how an animator draws smears just comes down to personal preference, but let's take a look at a couple ways that we can draw them. Here's a quick action study I did of a character swinging a bat. This is a pretty common exercise they make you do in animation school, and I think it's a good way to test your animation ability. If you work in the industry here, you will be animating on a baseball episode eventually. I myself participated in the A Sunny Boy baseball episode. It's an inevitability, like the beach episode. Although I never worked on a beach episode, unless you count the Yojo Senki OVA where they bombed the Isekai Fringe in Isekai North Africa. It's sort of like a beach. Here our character readies up to swing her bat in A1, and the baseball itself is on the B layer, about to come down. In A2, she anticipates and pulls back. It's on threes with an in-between dry in there. The ball also starts to come down here. In A3, our character makes contact with the ball. In A4, she follows through with her swing, and that ball is sent flying. In A5, she continues following through, and the ball flies out of frame here. Note that A3 and A4 are on 2s, but we go back to animating on 3s from A5. And A6 here is to help cushion that swing, with about 2 in-between drawings to bring this movement to a stop. If you'd like to see me animating this, I'll put a time lapse on my Patreon. More information at the end. Well, I think the animation itself is fine. The distance that the bat travels from A2 to A3 and then to A4, it's so great that our eyes have difficulty keeping up with the movement. That bat almost swings 180 degrees in the span of 4 frames or so. One solution could be to just add an in-between, and instead of our animation being on 2s, we make it on 1s. But that's a lot of work. And contrary to what those people who use AI tools to make animation 60 frames a second think, more is not always better. The answer is to, of course, bridge that gap using a smear. One way to draw a smear is to elongate the object in motion, a bit like how they do it in Western animation. Make it big, but not too big. Our smear covering about half the space of the movement of the bat between our two keys should be enough. We can cap off the ends with these large serpentine lines that further accentuates the speed of the movement. Note that this drawing is on twos. Smear should really be used on drawings held for one or two frames as it's really something meant to be felt and not seen. If you want to add a smear to a drawing held on threes, Maybe think if an extra in-between could work better. After the shape is finished, it's also important to adjust the shadows to match the smear. Let's do the same for A4, since the bat covers a lot of distance here too. Note that while the smear changes the shape and volume of the original drawing, some aspects of the original drawing is left behind, like the straight edge of the bat, so that the audience can still read the object as a bat. 
I made a quick color mock-up so you guys can see the volume more clearly and get a feel of how it looks finalized. Next is a bit of a design for smears reminiscent of those old Bugs Bunny cartoons. It involves two or three after images of the object in motion, the bat in this case. Each after image is almost a subdued version of the previous type of smear and much smaller in volume. The squiggly sharp lines on both sides of the bat again further accentuates the movement. And we do the same for A4, making sure to match the arc of the movement of the bat. This kind of smear is great for these big arcing swings. They do feel cartoony and is a bit rare in Japanese animation, but I've seen them used here before to great effect. An alternative version of this has the after image's outline be a color trace line, meaning those black lines disappear in the ink and paint process of animation. This further pushes the after images into the background and puts the focus on the main bat area. Here's a pretty common way you see animators here approach smears. It consists of these sharp, thin zigzag lines like you see on the seismograph during an earthquake. And like a seismograph measuring an earthquake, the stronger and faster the movement, the higher the lines and the shorter the distance between them. Make sure to also match the nature of the movement. Here for example, the bat moves the fastest the further away from the pivot point which are the character's hands. That's why the lines on the edge of the bat are much longer and intense. To help improve design, make sure to vary up the wavelength and amplitude. Match the shadows, and let's also do the same for A4. You've probably seen a lot of these if you watch anime. These don't work as well in bridging large movements, but they do help accentuate really fast ones. Here is the way I generally draw smears in my own work. I draw a bunch of lines parallel to the direction of the movement, varying them up as well as interspacing them with normal non-smear lines. I create a colored trace line either matching the original shape of the bat or in sharp zigzag lines when there is a lot of movement in the smear. And let's do the same for A4. I learned this from director Tachikawa when I worked on Decadence. This is essentially how he approaches them. This way of drawing smears gives us a much more subdued version of the previous type of smear. And I think it's a much more elegant way of drawing them. And with the color mock-up, I think you can see what I mean. And to finish, let's add some smears to the ball on the B cell as well. So it's a bit hard to add smears to something when it's coming straight at you. So for drawings like B4 here, we can use some speed lines surrounding the ball to give it the feeling of motion. And for B5, let's use the seismograph way of drawing smears with the huge sharp zigzag lines. Remember to match the shadows as well, and let's check it out. Pretty cool, eh? All right, that's it. Thanks everyone, I hope some of you have learned something today. This channel is supported by my Patreon members, and if you'd like to help keep the channel running, links are down below. Members get some extra content every month for as low as a dollar. Other than that, check out my social media, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>